Hello, guys and girls. This is Lawrence Watson here on Whatever Oasis podcast in Espanol. So basically, yeah, I got that gig through um, Simon Half on the boys record designer who also worked with Paul Weller, who I'd worked with for many, many years. I'd worked with Simon for many years as well. So I think it was before Christmas of the year it was released. Suddenly, I don't know if the photographer was available, wasn't available, something happened, but Simon called out the blue two days before Christmas and said, look, we've got this idea for the album cover, this graffiti on garage doors. We need, we need a photographer to shoot the, shoot the setup for us. You, you, could you fancy doing it? I said, yeah, no, I'd love to. It so, sounds like an interesting job. Cool. And um, I, ju I just got various, various different kinds of cameras just to give it different feels. I, I hired a, there's a lovely Linhoff camera that does a panoramic squared, well, it's not square, it's like 617. Yeah. So it's your lovely panoramic, pan panoramic image. Um, I even did some wide lux cameras, um, some 35, and then the fisheye on a 35 mil camera, which is the actual one that they, they went with in the end, the very grainy yeah. 35 mil fisheye shot became the, became the album cover. That, that that that's that was going to be my question. That fish mm. eye uh, effect is, mm. uh, I mean, is in in real uh, time or did you do it post? Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's all real time. That's all. That's all the image as it was and, and pr printed by myself in the dark room with, and with then your I'm, lens. Yeah. yeah, with the lens. Yeah, it's just that it's a very. I think it's a sixteen or something on a nickel. It's a nickel, nickel fisheye lens. I think it's a sixteen millimeter nickel fish fisheye lens. It's quite okay. good. It has a little built-in filter tray, so you can actually put little colors in as well with the color. When I took some color shots yeah, 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 as well, yeah. I, you, I, you I, can I, rotate little filters on it as well. It's, it's a lovely little lens. It's yeah, I think there, there are promos or something with that shot in color. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and the picture of them. That, that 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 is at, at, the, at the bottom is in the same session, right? That, yeah, and it's um that was when they said afterwards they were happy with what I did for the album artwork, and they said, look, why don't you do the press session with them as well and stuff and keep keep it all together. So that shot, yeah, that shot on that Linhoff camera, that panoramic camera. So yeah. it's a lovely, lovely quality quality camera and quality film, and um, that shot in Hogarth's house and that's the maze in Hogarth's that which I actually did yeah I suggested because I, I knew about that maze and it's actually where the Beatles recorded the video for paperback writer in that same oh. location I think cool. there's a mad, lovely greenhouse there and Paul Weller did it I think he did an MTB award thing or a Brit award live performance in it as well and I found out about right. that then probably that's probably seven eight years before so I always knew about the, the history of that place but I knew the maze was really interesting So I said we because we'd actually gone to we'd gone to Archway and there's a famous bridge there. It's near where where um, Ray Davis' studio is, Conk Studios. Mm -hmm. It's um, mm -hmm. Archway. It's called Suicide Bridge for, oh. for obvious reasons, but it, but it's hugely fenced up now. And they were thinking we'll get this lovely shot of London in the background, this panoramic sort of thing. It's a, it doesn't work like that. I think people were deceived about vistas they think that they can like they see them behind them so you, the human eye zooms into the, to vistas <laughs> yeah the camera when you put four people in front of a, a, a background that's very far away you don't see any of it so yeah. but they wanted that idea i don't know who would suggested that i said well I'll try it but you're not going to see much and there's huge fences around it to stop people getting on top of the bridge so we tried there and then i said look let's go back to um let's go over to chiswick to this hogarth house it's, it's got a really lovely maze to it And um, so, so you changed took, that. You, you took them to that place, to that maze. Yeah, took them to Hogarth House. Yeah, yeah, I took okay. them to there, and that, yeah. which is famous. He's the, he's the famous illustrator. I don't know if you know yeah, much yeah, about yeah. Hogarth. You know Hogarth's history. He did all the, yeah. the, the lovely sort of satirical illustrations of London, and all the gin, gin drinking women and stuff. He's a, a very important yeah, yeah, man yeah. in that in, in London, and um, and in fact, the Lila one above is shot obviously with a fish eye. That shot on Primrose Hill. But what we did do, we actually went back twice because you'll see in the one for Lila, Liam's wearing a white jacket. Yeah. And, yes. and when we shot that, we shot that first at Hogarth House, Liam was wearing a white jacket and he just jumped out too much. He just, it just became too prominent in the picture. And Andy Bell was wearing a coat that Noel described. He looked like he worked in a fucking, in a garden center. <laughs> so we, we um a jacket change was done but they liked the, they liked the location the feel of the picture so we actually revisited the location which was good on Noel's part he saw that he saw the picture could be could be made and he saw it was worth going back with them wearing the right clothes 
Okay, we went but, back and but, reshot it. But it's not the same coat that Andy is wearing in the fish I fish uh, picture with no, uh, Liam. Yeah, I'm, it's the same one. No, different? I'm not sure. You'd have to look at it closely. It's probably it's probably not the right one. It's more. He's probably wearing like a Barbary, like the posh people wear in the countryside. Mm, it's probably like yeah. that kind of coat. And in the yeah. in the one for the album sleeve, it's like a leather bike. You know, your normal bomber jacket sort of thing yeah, that yeah, you're. Yeah. you're Role musicians would normally wear so he, he got the jacket right and liam's got a lovely high collared like a sailor's sort of coat with a lovely high color and it's like enveloping his, his neck his, his cheeks as well it's very it sculpts his face really brilliantly and that, and that looked right because it, it it just it, he jumped out too much in the other picture it just like, suddenly this white coat took over the picture yeah so and it was it was it was right and they saw that it worked much better but the lila one was done on that same day we went to primrose hill and um Sorry, on a different day, but yeah, yeah. I think we got away with it on those ones. I printed it quite dark and brought the jacket down, so it didn't it didn't jump out so much. But yeah. so we went back and redid it. But and that's it. You do it when something, something's worth doing. You try and do it to it to the best. And the album cover is. Uh, did you have uh, a, a, an idea, a drawing, or something about the the, the cover, or they Don't just uh, you just took a lot of pictures and they. Choose one. Yeah, I end up taking a lot of pictures, but I think Simon and Noel would have found the person who was going to do the artwork for the typography for the doors and things. So I was there while they were putting them on and building. I was even taking pictures while they were putting the, the artwork on because then one of the doors obviously became the um the back, the lyric sheet as well. Not the lyric sheet. Oh, no, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the song yeah, yeah. title. Yeah. Song title. Which uh -huh. was put on, uh -huh. yeah. I don't know if that was done on a different day, the song titles. There might have been a different day. They might have run out of time that day. But we but, went but back. I think then. The name was, was painted. That the name yeah. was painted in the door, or just a sticker. What what is that? Some yeah, I think some of them were stickers, and some of them were. Painted. They ended up buying the one that had the song titles. They ended yeah. up buying a new door for the carriage, <laughs> and I did some pitch in the studio, and we actually brought that bloody door to the yeah. studio. There is there is really? a session with that <laughs> bloody garage door in. <laughs> I was right pain in the bloody ass moving the garage door around. Yeah, so somebody, I imagine, somebody, yeah. Probably, somebody probably has that fucking garage door somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that that would have been good for the exhibition, but yeah, it was the wrong period though. Yeah, that that could be um, great. And the great item for a next one. And the and the original idea for the album cover was in black or white. Um, just I. I I don't think they decided at that point. I think it was to show us what, show us all the ways you can shoot it. So I probably would have shot a bit of color, a bit of black and white. And then I, yeah, there's a lovely paper that I use. Called, they don't make it anymore called Oriental Seagull. It's a Japanese paper. And I do yeah. a thing called list prints. So there's lots yeah. of pits. Yeah. Lots of the prints, the Lila one and the um, sleep. They, they, it gives it a lovely brown sort of rich tone and very contrasty and punchy. So I printed it on some different kinds of photographic paper and gave Noel the choice to have a look at lots of different choices of prints. So I blew them up quite big. I blew them up sort of poster size in, in the dark room mm -hmm. and brought these lovely big prints to the office and he could look at them and see see, see if he liked the detail and everything in them. And, and, he, and one of them, he said, that's the one, that's the one, that's the cover. <laughs> okay. I, I, I and and what, uh, what, do, what do you prefer, the black and white photos or color photos? <laughs> so I, probably do get drawn to black and white a lot of time, mainly because I started shooting lots of black and white. The enemy never used to have colour pictures in it until the sort of latter part of it. They started started doing covers in colour, but good colour. I, I, I've done some lovely sleeves in colour, though. I've done lots of lovely Paul Weller stuff in colour. I've done some lovely shots of Ian Brown. I, I do a technique where you cross-process, you take the a transparency film and you put it through a colour negative bath. And again, it gives you very zingy colors that are very contrasty and very strong. Yes. So I went through a long period, but they don't make that film anymore. So I went through a period of shooting that. So, yeah, I think it's what, what, suit, what suits the mood, basically. Yeah, I'm not, I've not got a strong, like, only black and white sort of thing. Some, I think documentary studios always normally looks nicer in black and white, but mm -hmm. an interestingly lit studio can work sometimes as well. Yeah. yeah. But I, it's nice I have that control when I shoot black and white because I print my own black and white as well. Where the color stuff I have to pass over to another another technician, to a, to a, a color printer basically. And then sometimes I've got to be sitting there and saying I want that darker, I want that lighter. So I lose a bit of control sometimes on that. So it's a bit harder. You you yeah. said that uh, you love silhouettes. Uh, yeah, too, yeah. The, 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 the cover of Lila uh, was your idea or was yeah, the way I exposed it. 
Yeah, yeah, I just exposed it. I would have exposed it for some of the shots where you would have seen their faces and then I would have exposed it for some of it where I knew that the sky, I wanted the sky to go bright and I wanted there to be no detail. I just wanted the bodies to be against the hillside. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I would try different techniques and different exposures and, and then print it out and see which one works best. I probably would have printed some where you can see them quite clearly and then print something went no the silhouette looks strong okay. i think always graphically it always looks good my, uh, probably everybody knows my work with paul whether they know the, the silhouettes on the cover of wildwood and yeah. that's, again well, it's just a yeah. doorway doorway of a studio basically it was just on his bass guitar and you just had the lovely green pasture of the studio outside and i just silhouetted them against the door frame of the studio the lovely old manor studios um but that's it yeah but okay. you try you experiment and then you pick pick what you think is the strongest at the end of the day yeah 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 cool cool Okay, so next next ones. Um, mm. These uh, single covers uh, mm. were they made in the same session, and uh, what that they mean? Yeah, a little bit later down the line. Yeah, I'm not. Simon would have would have worked that up. The guitar. I'm not sure where the guitar came from, but he he took it away and put the lettering on it, put some stickers on it, and then I then I was given it to just take take some uh, take photograph it how you want. Yeah, yeah, and I think we 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 come to the idea of just keep it keep it simple against the white background. There's enough going on in the guitar to not put it against something else, and um and the keys those keys were actually Noel's keys, and I said you should change the things on those. Somebody could copy those keys. <laughs> really, really, are they Noel's <laughs> was, one? Luckily, that's a few houses back, I think, but they're Noel's keys. Yeah, they're Noel's keys. Yeah. Oh, great! So so that key change with the P symbol is yeah. Noel's. Yeah, the nose. Yeah, it's nose keys. Oh, very old keys. Great. Very, very old keys. No? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's. Yeah, he that's doesn't great. live that. He doesn't live at that house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't copy those keys. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You won't get in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Stop the clocks. Mm. Stop the clocks. Yeah. A amazing job. Amazing job. Uh, yeah. The idea was. Uh, what, what was the idea? The original idea. We The original idea wasn't wasn't to, to do the Peter Blake thing. The original idea, which you see in my exhibition, is is they wanted to go to a place again. This '60s thing that everybody we keep going back to with Simon <laughs> is the famous <laughs> the famous um, Granny takes a trip. The old '60s cafe on um, the King's Road, opposite the World's End pub, and um, it was where where the Hen where Hendrix and the Who and the Stones all went to went to have a coffee and smoke their smoke their pipes and have a bit of marijuana and stuff so yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it got very big sort of cult status for fans of the 60s and stuff but it didn't and i when i looked at it and we went down and saw it it didn't look that interesting the exterior of it had this limey sort of paint and it wasn't it wasn't painted very well it didn't look very interesting yeah. to me it's history it's history was good but as a backdrop it, it was rubbish <laughs> it was <quite> rubbish <laughs> yeah, and, um, that, it yeah. just didn't So I took them on the I took them on the stairs. I shot them across the road, and then what I ended up doing, I thought I've got to try and make this look more fucking interesting because it doesn't look interesting at all. It wasn't the, the weather that day was pretty grey and flat. The lighting wasn't great, so I put them against the the, the pubs, the famous pub, World's End pub. It's just down the road from where Vivian Westwood set our first shop up, where where World's End was and stuff. So it's, it's got lots of cultural references to the 60s and to, to punk as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I tried to shoot through. I was trying to get the buses go by, have each of the other members through the windows of the bus, so you maybe get a glimpse of Andy or a glimpse of Noel when yeah. whoever was standing in front of the front of the um the World's End pub. And I ended up getting two really good, lovely shots of Liam with a bus whirring by mm -hmm. and Noel with a bus whizzing by. And they, yeah. they look, and everybody really likes those pictures. And they were meant to be the album cover. And then we found out only a short period later, some little band had used Granny Takes a Trip for their album cover. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I was I was quietly, quietly relieved, in fact, that I, although the buses probably would have made quite good album covers. I think we, uh, you mean yeah, these pictures? Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. And you see yeah. the green building, you see the building behind the yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, 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 doorway. Yeah. It, yeah, that's Granny Takes a Trip behind there. You see the idea was to try and get glimpses of the other members through the windows of the bus. Oh, and okay. And maybe put, put it together as a montage or something. I still think I might, I don't normally mess around with my pictures too much, but I might one day flip flip Noel's bus the other way around so they collide in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had them crashing together. Great <laughs> idea. Like 
I like the speed of it as well. That Liam's is a blur of sort of a haze of, yeah. <laughs> and Noel has got Tate written on it yeah. as well. <laughs> Yeah, so so basically, this uh, was the idea for the album cover, but you end up doing this, right? Yes, we okay. we uh, yeah no, yeah we end up okay, yeah then so the um yeah yeah so basically then Noel said well look let's let's see if we can get Peter Blake to do a, a sleeve he was he's always great for a good record sleeve an iconic yeah. sleeve so yeah, yeah. we um the, there was some discussions had at the office and stuff and then I got the lovely lovely opportunity to spend a whole day with Peter Blake I think I spent two days with him and um, going to his lovely studios over in Chiswick where he keeps most of his artwork and his memorabilia so he keeps lots of the props from Sergeant Peppers the boxer and all the, all the, all the lovely bits and pieces so dotted in the, that picture are lovely little bits from the um, the giant the shoes the little um the famous um i think it's max's famous iconic board like comedian they call them jam shoes on the bottom of the cupboard on the left which oh. paul weller sort of made famous but they're actually they go back before paul weller there's a famous old english comedian that wore those and he wore very very sort of floral oh. like over uh, over the top suits and stuff and they come from there the dwarfs i think come from the period then you've got the lovely little michael kane bits in the doorway and stuff and the dartboardy thing i think comes from an old fun fair so i don't know if it, if peter had, had those and hadn't used them yet but so we were basically just gathering gathering bits from his storeroom that that, that sort of worked for work for that and i shot it on a lovely 10-8 camera they're shot on a lovely big 10-8 transparency though so the quality is really lovely on those so it's quite time consuming but i thought no if they want to blow those up they're going to have really good quality for posters and things so we shot we shot on a lovely big you know the big like bellows the big size bellows camera the old style so, uh -huh. yeah. noel was present at the time of the shooting yeah and all came down and stuff yeah so it all came a bit frantic because because peter's getting on a little bit and it was sort of like we didn't have many things in the cupboard and that and i said look where's where's all the sergeant pepper stuff peter where's the sergeant pepper stuff <laughs> yeah, Point yeah, me i, towards I can't pepper imagine stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah so quickly no it's coming come on we want to be able to show him something yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So I, i i we all lent a hand and grabbed as many bits and pieces and tried different things in in the cupboard and stuff in the wardrobe and i and think the, the scarf thing. is from simon right It might be, yeah, it could be, could be, yeah, it yeah. could be, yeah. If that, if he says in the book, yeah, that's something that Simon would wear, yeah. And that's and those uh, dartboards are paintings or are real? Yeah, they're, I think they're from like a fun fair. I oh. think they were one where you threw like darts into. Yeah, get, yeah, if you yeah. hit, hit the black or you, yeah, you hit the white, you win a goldfish sort of thing. You win a prize. So they're old, and Peter would have probably found, yeah, found them at a lovely old old fun fair somewhere, and we just saw those lying around. And um, right. yeah, either right. Simon himself or Peter, we said, look, they, they make really good background as well. So, and they became obviously details for the CDs and things, didn't they? And other bits and pieces. So they, they all everything belongs for... to Peter, right? Yeah, yeah. Apart from the scarf, <laughs> <laughs> probably not the scarf. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, great. All Peters. Yeah. Okay, this one, this album cover. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like that cover here. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's... The, the, the picture is blur. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's meant to be yeah. like that. Uh, what was yeah, that? that yeah, concept? yeah, yeah. No, no. Chose one of the blurred ones. Yeah, yeah. There were there are ones like I said. It was it's shot on an old an old um 1950s 1960s land Polaroid land camera that I found in the Rose Bowl. I bought for twenty five dollars, <laughs> and I knew that I knew that Fuji did a stock that fits in those old Polaroid cameras. I had to find a funny battery to bring. People think those cameras were broken, but they take a little battery that operates the shutter and the, um, the little meter in them. And I knew, of course, in Los Angeles, you'd find somewhere that makes And of course, there's a shop that just makes batteries. I think it's at 1.3. It's an odd voltage. They made me some batteries bought some of the Fuji stock and I just yeah. I just had fun with it I just started shooting everything I've got, I've got I've got hundreds of Polaroids I just did my own projects as well I was just going off shooting things and then one night we, we went um, I'd been trying to scout for locations looking through location books in LA and I said there's a really interesting petrol station at night and it doesn't it looks nothing like that during the day it's right next to bit of the um the um um it's beverly beverly hills or whatever it's the, the police station from beverly hills cop or whatever from the film the famous art deco police station the police station is just across the road from there oh. but at night you get that luminous flurry the green 
And Noel said, yeah, he said, he said, but I said like a Viking longbow initially. He said, no, I see it like a bird flying from the, up from the ashes. I said, yeah, yeah. okay. I see that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I see a bird as well. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if that had anything to do with high flying birds. I don't yeah, know. exactly. You'd have, to, you'd have to ask Noel that one. But um, yeah, it just became very, very magical. And it was, it was just myself, uh, an assistant. I think we were about 11.30 at night and we waited to, for it to be quiet so he wouldn't get pestered by anybody. But it was funny. There was, was quite a few people did manage to come. And when we were just setting up off to the left there, suddenly an Australian came up to us and he said, I was going to be in, I was in a band and I saw you come and play in Australia. And he said, I gave up after that. I knew I could never be good enough. <laughs> so, and then another serendipity, the traffic lights just next to us, a car pulls up and of course, what are they blaring out? They're blaring out an oasis song as they pull up beside us. So it's always, uh, I like those mad serendipity things that happen. You, you wouldn't think you'd find anything at 11.30 at night in Los Angeles that had anything to do with oasis and suddenly yeah. <laughs> there was things happening. So, And we did the lovely Union Station there as well where they, there's the... That's the lovely location they use in Blade Runner for the police station. And I'd always wanted to shoot in there. And a great, and Noel said, yeah, go down there. And one day he'd finished doing his drum tracks up in the hills. And I just took my little fishing bag, like a couple of little cameras. And we just walked around really anonymously and just plonked him in those seats because they got lovely art deco seats and furniture and just got a bit of, I, I like those. They're like Robert Frank pictures, those ones. They're like Americana, those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, some really interesting pictures and that. Like, and I, I got that book, I bought him a copy of Time magazine because they just they just killed Ben Laden that, that period. And they had the Red Cross going through Ben Laden on the cover. So I said, look, a bit like Eric Clapton when he was reading the Beano in those famous shots of Eric Clapton. I thought, yeah. I'll do a little thing on that. But I think we'll be, we'll be one cleverer than yeah. <laughs> not yeah. a comic like you know yeah. Prime magazine yeah. and the fact that I had Ben Laden with his red cross through because normally photographers mark their contact sheets with like red circles red crosses to say I don't want that picture used and yeah. they'd use it to say they killed the man but yeah photography you use that with China graphs so I, I like the photography reference in that as well right. so, but yeah we found some good locations there for that, that session yeah I think this one is uh, yeah. also uh, yeah that's Hollywood you, Boulevard yeah Hollywood Boulevard, yeah, and I really love, yeah. He, he sent me a text and when that first came out, and said, I'm, "I'm really, yeah, that, that's a good single cover, and, and I'm really pleased. Yeah. It's great, it's got, it's and, got a film, yeah, and film. The, the title, the title, oh, mate, that, that, that that's yeah. something I want to know. It, it was already there, that yeah, title. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it but it wasn't but it wasn't that title that that Noel saw. They'd actually put something up about Ben Laden. He saw going from his hotel the night before or the morning. He'd seen something written about Ben Laden. I went down there to check it out. He said, "Go down and have a look at it." He'd seen he'd seen that this Ben Laden thing again, and I went down. And I said. Well, it hasn't got anything about Ben Laden, but it's got something even more magical. It's got the most magical slogan for somebody starting anew. It's never too late to be what you yes. might have been. It was poetry. Yeah, that's the, perfect. The, God, perfect. the gods look up, the photography gods look after me sometimes very well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was magic. And even in the window to the left, you probably can't see it in dark. There's this the, you can actually there's a little red neon thing, and you actually get the reflection of the capital. The the capital building is reflected in that window oh, as well, which is yeah. a lovely little detail that you wouldn't really notice. And and right. somebody else. Right. Right. No, that, that that building is uh, famous there in LA. It's a lovely, it's a lovely. And we went down, and again, Noel, Noel said, when, when should I come down now? And I looked at it sort of lunchtime, after lunch. I said, no, no, what we want, we want long shadows. We want the end of the day with a golden light casting those beautiful shadows along the, which you only get in, like you get in New York and you get in like LA and stuff you, with those big streets, those big broad streets in America. And you get those lovely long shadows. So I went down there. No, not yet, not yet. Five thirty, six thirty, seven thirty, six, seven forty-five. We're on, we're on. <laughs> the shadows are good. Shadows are magical, and I love. There's a couple silhouetted there, yeah. hand in hand, walking into the light. It's like Eugene Smith's picture of the two children after he recovered from his injury. He, had, he did a lovely shot of two children walking through bushes with their hands. I think it's like walking into walking in I can't remember what it's called but it was the first picture when Eugene Smith had recovered so I liked that it. it looked a bit like Eugene Smith's couple of children yeah. it's two two couples two lovers walking into the light so exactly. I love that as well yeah no, it's, amazing. It's amazing amazing sleeve. shot um, lovely sleeve it's a lovely sleeve it was a, a, a movie it was a theater 
Uh, it's, I think it's called the Henry Ford um, Theatre or something. They do gigs there, I think. I should actually... Yeah, I think it's called something like the Henry Ford. It's the far end of Hollywood Boulevard. It's before you reach that sorry that horrible W Hotel or whatever. That W Hotel is about two blocks down on the left. So Ooh, you're at the opposite okay. end to Hollywood Boulevard to the um yeah, to the yeah, main yeah, yeah. Sort of wrong, and you're just on the edge of it because and Dave Sardi's studio is just up the hills from there, very close oh, to there. Okay, okay. You're going sort of just sort of you're just a, you're a bit further down from Laurel Canyon Way. So and we and we spent a lovely. Lovely couple of a lovely few um, half an hour. Where I said, Let's go up to Laurel Canyon. We got to go to Laurel Canyon. Laurel Canyon's got so much history. <laughs> Joni Mitchell, Neil Young, Crosby, so everybody all hung out. And again, another thing happened there where I sat him outside that dry cleaners in Laurel Canyon. A young lady comes down. I think she might have been a South American lady or, or Italian. So she came down and she couldn't believe it. I've just been playing you upstairs. And I, <laughs> she was an Oasis fan. And it she was came, an Oasis fan, yeah. And she came down and Noel, sit, Noel sitting on her stoop below her apartment. And stuff. <laughs> Magic kept happening on those pictures. Yeah, there. yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally. So it, it, that, that was, was, was advertised. It was a movie or it was a uh, play? Yeah. Or it was... I don't know. Or just a slogan. Or just a slogan. Yes. I think they kept, they kept revolving. I think they like that in LA. They like putting slogans up. You're getting very speech. You'll get very hippie chalkboards written down for a lovely sentiment for the day sort of thing that, yeah, to sort of... Live. So I don't think it was gig related or anything. I think it was just a, a sentiment stuff that they, yeah, they put up for, yeah, just like one of those... One of those slogans I, that we put I up to. I always thought that was planned, really. Mm. But yeah, no, that, that all happened. That, that was yeah, all just. That's I can't. I'm still to this day. I don't know what the thing about Ben Lard never said because <laughs> I never saw it. <laughs> I'll have to ask <laughs> Noel if he can remember. Noel is a lucky guy, totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, so this picture. Mm. Yeah, this is a, yeah, this is a famous um, this is a famous Hollywood address as well, and I wish I could remember the actor. This house has lo lovely history to it as well, although it's, it's a bit sinister. I think the man, the actor who lived there is accused of killing his wife with a pearl necklace. Oh. So if you look up your Hollywood memorabilia, you'll probably find out the history of this. Again, it's tucked up near Echo Parkway, Silver Lake. You go up the very steep hills from Silver Lake and there's this lovely house with these great windows. And the woman who was living there was collecting all these stuffed animals. <laughs> Basically, there was a bear in the corner that wolf and a few other bits and pieces, but that window was 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 amazing, and um, and the wolf there is great. It was lit, sort of backlit from the window. But I, I love that 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 house had lots of those big old houses have got have got stories to them and stuff. So you read that. There's a lovely book, um, Hollywood Babylon. It does all those stories about the, the underbelly of, of yeah. Hollywood, all the sinister, the, the fatty Arbuckle stories, and all the Superman who who died under mysterious, yeah. And, and they they did they did filming for the mm. video mm. video of I yeah. Fuck, I Fuck Around there right yeah yeah they used the swimming pool up there I think yeah, yeah I think they had a swimming pool in there it's where Noel plays the priest and stuff yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay 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 so yeah. it, it, it was well, the yeah. same the same days the shot yeah was... same day yeah okay. they, they filmed it yeah yeah and they yeah I think the front yeah so I don't know if they actually would have shot in that room I, I think I found that room and so I think Noel was doing an interview in there I thought we got a shoot in this room this room's amazing. So um, we did some pictures in there after Noel was doing his interview and then they were setting up for the swimming pool sections for the video at the front of the house. So, yeah. And, so and, I think and a question, and, and well, artistic question, that uh, frame at, at, the, at the left, that, that seems to be... Uh, the film know, sort of... The yeah, film, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the graphic designers. I think they went with a okay. feel, basically. They, they've gone for the feel. You know, the, the burnout on the on the 16 mil um, daylight spools for the Bolex camera, it gives you that burnout normally in, in the movie mm -hmm. sort of things. And they've given it that movie feel and stuff. And they, and they carried that through the other pictures. There's a bit on the previous, on the first single as well. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that one. yeah, you could see a hint of it there. They put a hint of colours to the right and stuff and a bit of the film. They were just giving them something that, that married them all together. It was just a bit of a, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. If I did a book, I'd probably print them print them straight as well and you could right. see how they look without the, yeah, without the colour cast on. I think they were just giving them some continuity between them all, basically, that they married all up together. Yeah. So that, that came from the, um, the sleeve designers, the colour okay. things. But okay. I okay. shot lots of Bolex on that because the film that they made of it, the dick, dick cuts together dick and stuff, Carter. I shot... 
I shot some Bolex footage. I shot a little bit, three or four rolls of Super 8 I shot while I was there. And then that went into, and I did a little bit of DVD when Noel was in the studio. Yeah. And then the rostrum, some of my stills, but basically it was all my, yeah, all the footage oh, and great. stills great. became the film, like the bonus DVD that they made or whatever. Yeah. That's the, that the making of. That was great. That, that yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this one, it, it was uh, on the video, right? Of yeah, What a Life. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That was a good day. That was, yeah, that's out towards Lancaster, I think that is. They're out in the, you saw, you're going towards the Joshua Tree area of LA out in the desert there. So, and it's an old, um, I think it was built, somebody was saying it was built by, um, for a film with, um, who's a guy from Easy Rider, old, love you, Vietnam, old um, Apocalypse Now. <laughs> yeah. um, Harry, Um, who's the bloody I guy? Who died? The name. Yeah. Um, you know the actor in Easy yeah. Rider, not Fonda, the other one. And um, there's a diner in the back, the Easy Easy Diner, or whatever that you see in the video and stuff. But I saw, they I said saw it that. was built. Yeah, it was built for one of his films. But like it, they do in LA. If something's built and it looks good, they just leave it there, and you can go back and yeah, cool. you can go back and reuse it. It's good because there's there's one that I've used for videos. I did a video for. A, a singer years ago as well and it's called the four aces and it's used a hell of a lot it's one that they all go to so it was nice that they found one that wasn't wasn't so obvious it's probably yeah. known by the people in LA but to people in England I don't think they would have seen this easy easy rider diner or something it was called it had a nice sign that I've shot an old in front of those bits of the diner yeah, that, as well that, that was in the video of the death of you and me yeah yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah. that that, that yeah. was okay, okay. Yeah, exactly yeah cool, yeah. cool. But a good day Nice yeah, day in the totally. sun, is it? Yeah. And the girls, amazing. <laughs> yeah, the girls, lovely. Yeah, lovely models. <laughs> Very sexy. <laughs> Don't go wrong with the sexy models. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Very yeah. good. Yeah. In fact, and those those carrying that gun in the thing as well. There's shots I've got with yeah. him carrying this pistol as well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like a gun, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so next album, Chasing Yesterday. Yeah. That yeah. picture. That yeah, concept. that shot in. Concepts that Noel had found these devices that you um you plugged into a projector, then played music through them, and they varied the wavelengths of, of how the light came up on the um oh. on the on the projections. And you you you'd play different different frequencies. We used some of his music, we messed around with some other kinds of music. I think for some of the ones where I got it really dancing on the color ones where it really went really phonetic and really mad was mm. some was drum and bass. <laughs> we yeah. played some drum and bass. <laughs> the drum Basically. and bass worked really Yeah. Worked really well for making the projection, making it send these different light sources out in different patterns. Yeah, 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 yeah. That you, there was two different boxes, yeah, because Noel had found one with a color one, so I'd taken it away and got a lovely lady called um, yeah, um, Joe who who does all my projections for me, and we we did some tests with it, and and then Joe I think found that he said they make a black and white one as well, Lawrence, that you can just do it in black and white. I said, yeah. well, let's get that one as well. So we ordered a black and white one up, the color one. And we played with them. And then I said, no, okay, I think, I think we've got a handle on how it works and stuff. And then they're shot in a studio up near where I live in uh, West London in, in Scrubs Lane in a photographic studio. No one wanted a white wall, brick sort of wall. He wanted yeah. as the background as well. So luckily the studio had a nice white, white brick wall. Mm -hmm. And that, that one's with the, probably that would be the black and white projector. And he just went for that one with the, um, with the lines coming down, very simple. And he's just lit by the projector light, basically. Yeah, there's no other lighting apart from the light that came from the projector. And I had to be careful with the projector. I had to try and get it up reasonably high so mm -hmm. he didn't have a fucking a, a weird sort of halo around his head that yeah, made like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. made him have a funny shadow above his head. So no, 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 but, yeah. yeah we, we had some fun with it. He has so, a, a small shadow, like no noticeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah it's not yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, it's not 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 making him look like he's got a giant extra head on top. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the color ones work really well, and the single sleeves yeah, became, yeah, yeah. The, became color the color ones we used. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, and the, and the, uh, the, the white jacket was part of the concept because there are some yeah. colors reflected in, in there, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why I said you wear white, and then hopefully we can get some of these projections. And I did some pictures where I practically just projected. I did some where I had two two projectors running. I had one running on a background. And I had one running across, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. hitting him with a different pattern. So I was trying to mix patterns as well. So okay. I put maybe the black and white one on his body and the color in the background. So we did we did a few variations on it as well. So, and the, um, and yeah. the music was uh, Noel's one or different playlist? Um, 
it might have been a different one. I think that that one might have been Noel's one because we didn't the, the black and white ones. We didn't make them do too many mad patterns, but we wanted to try and stretch it and get as many choices as possible. Okay. But I think that the, the fast drum and bass made the lights really fucking change really yeah, quickly and give yeah, you these yeah. lots of mad spontaneous things happening. So I think yeah, some of the single ones might have been drum and bass playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. This one. That's, yeah, that's New Orleans. Yeah, lovely New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. That, that that was a picture you already had, right? Or you just yeah, when, you take it yeah. for, for that yeah. cover? I take yeah, it was. Uh, we went to. I um. I drove my oldest son. I wanted to go on a road trip. My oldest son Travis, and we drove from Los Angeles to New Orleans to meet Noel. And I said, "You have some time off in New Orleans because I think it'd be an amazing place to take some pictures of you." And he said, "Yeah, yeah. There's a day off there." Oh, and he said he. I don't think he'd played. I don't know. I don't know if Noel that Oasis had played New Orleans much before. If mm. he had, he'd probably flown in and flown out. So he said that, and the rest of the band wanted to see the city as well. So I got there a little bit earlier. I got there a couple of days earlier, and luckily, an old enemy photographer, Steve Pike, he lives out there now. He said, "I've got somewhere where you can where you can lay your head." So I said, "Great. Well, we'll come a bit early and go and see some bands. Try and find some locations." And um, yeah, no, we had a good good day of touring around, find some great old record shops, and finding some interesting. And that's one of one of the parks in New Orleans with all the lovely. I think they call it Spanish Moss, is it? That lovely stuff that hangs off the trees as well that you get. And oh. it's just it's only a while after the flooding as well. Yeah, the flood had happened probably about a year before or something. So it, it was still pretty devastated. A lot of New Orleans, you saw the damage that had happened. Yeah, terrible. But, yeah, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, uh, uh, so, and that and that guy there is. Some random guy or that's no. Oh, that's no. That's no. That's no. Yeah, no, that's no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I went and saw the park and and, and recce drowned and stuff. And I said we'd like to shoot some stuff with these lovely trees with the Spanish moss that hangs off the trees and stuff. Yeah. He said, fine, let's go there. And there's a little fountain there, and Noel is sat sat on the steps or walking. He might be sat in that one. He's sat in the steps of this fountain in the far distance. Yeah. Framed, framed by this forest in New Orleans, yeah. First news yeah. to me. Thank you. Yeah, no, he's there. <laughs> it's an amazing photo. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, so you you were in Argentina, right? Mm. With yeah, Noel. yeah. Mm. Tell us a little yeah. bit how 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 was the, the trip? Yeah, brilliant. It was great. Yeah, again, I, I what no what was happening? Noel was doing obviously he was doing the U2 tour and. um The Q magazine were about to do a piece on Noel for his for the new album probably, and um, I said to him, "Look, I, I don't. I'm not even bothered about being paid by Q magazine." And he said, "Look, I prefer you to take the pictures and have have a stranger come along on the tour and stuff." Yeah. So I said, well, "Look, we'll do, just sort me out my flight and stuff, and I'll come and have a look." But I've always wanted to see Argentina, and I'd love. I always wanted to see Buenos Aires. Oh, <clears> I thought yeah. it'd be a magical city to see. So. And um, I went out a few days earlier, and I think, as I said earlier, um, the, the lovely lady Laura at the office knew some knew some fans. Who, one of them did a bit of location scouting for films and things. He said, "Yeah, when you come out, Lawrence, we'll take you around. We'll show you some interesting parts of Buenos Aires, hence the, the cemeteries and things that I found. And we found ones that weren't the usual places, not the main cemetery in the center. We found one with the famous old old um, yeah. tango sing." Yeah, very yeah. God, famous like the, the Jim Morrison of South America. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so it was great to shoot. They were shot near the football grounds, the Boca Stadium with the mad coloured buildings and stuff. And that was a lovely scene by the yeah by the side of the street. That little boy was just sticking his head out the window there and, and playing and stuff. So it looks great. And I'll just, just stand by stand by that little lad and stuff. And it had little bits with Argentina referenced in it as well. So yeah, the name the, is there, Argentina. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, great. It was a lovely day. So, lovely so day. Everybody you, got to see a bit of the city as well. So you was with Noel all the way in Argentina only, Buenos Aires, or did you? Yeah, just went just Argen other... yeah, just the Argentina bit. Yeah, I wish I'd seen some more more South America. Yeah, I hope to one day. But yeah, I just came out for that, and then yeah, and then after they 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 packed up and done their gig, and it was a party that night, and I I was on a plane back home the following morning. So I must have had about. Five or six days, and five yeah, five or six days that must have spent there. Okay, so these pictures are uh, were taken in Abbey Road Studios, right, for the yeah. sessions of Dig Out Your Soul Oasis. Yeah, 
that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think the uh, second time they visited there. Yeah, I think the Oasis visited Abbey Road for a bit, but we were there a long time for this one. Yeah, I think we were there six weeks, or something five, six weeks. Yeah, six weeks. So it was lovely to spend time, and I got in there a little bit earlier, so I tried to dress it and make it look a bit more interesting. So hence the the fairy lights that the boys use. Jason had those in in the um in the guitar cases and stuff. So I tried to dress those. Then I bought a few more lights. And I put, there was a little seating area at the back. I put a nice sort of globe on a, on an arm over that. So I knew when they go and sit there, there'd be a little, I could flick that on and there'd be a little bit of light so I could do a bit of filming and stuff. So I made it like a, a little, not a studio, but gave it a bit of, bit of character and ambience and stuff. So yeah, was, the lights, but, right? That, yeah, it was, it's, it's, got the, it's got the horrible fluorescent lights and things like that. And you don't want to shoot, you want to have a mood and character to it. And, even to record it. It was lovely because the, the Dave Sardi came with his, his assistant so I said, oh, we love what you've done, Lawrence. You've turned it into like a magical fucking grotto sort of thing. I thought, <laughs> yeah. oh, great. But let's yeah. see, you're recording music. You want to be in something not cold. You want something warm and you want exactly. something, something comfortable. You want to create a vibe, an environment that's comfortable exactly. to sort of, that's, that's, yeah, which we, we seem to do. It's, it seemed to work. So it was good. So what was the vibe within the band there? Pretty good. Yeah, positive, it was good. Yeah. It, yeah, it was positive at that point. Yeah, now, now thinking back on it and stuff. Yeah, we were all eating together most nights. I think we must have we must have ate tons of fucking sushi every night. It was I think every night became sushi night most nights, but sushi. and then some some nights, some nights the tequila came out as well. I think Liam got the tequila out and stuff. I think it was a famous night where Kasabian turned up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And other people and stuff. The tequila definitely came out that night, yeah. Where they all tried to pick up an instrument, but it it, it was bloody useless. It was terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw terrible. that 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 film. It was I bloody terrible. Yeah, totally terrible. <laughs> drunken yeah. drunken musicians at four exactly. in the morning shouldn't be playing instruments. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's why rehearsing's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And do you remember uh, what uh, does Adidas bag has on that picture of Noel? It, what, it was a sorry, gift, what, or it, it was that, yeah, it, gift, Adidas, yeah, the Adidas bar. Yeah, it was that Adidas. Yeah, I'll tell you that that's my that's my little foray into advertising. There, <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, we we'd already we discussed with Gary Aspiden from Adidas that yeah. the um and they were interested in doing a book with me. It was Adidas's 60th anniversary. So we'll do a book. We won't have anything sort of written about Adidas. It'll be mm -hmm. your music book, but it just needs to have a nod in the pictures. That, which they do anyway. No wears yeah, they yeah, wear yeah. added all the time yeah, anyway. Yeah. So yeah. it was just me, just because I was shooting a little bit of Bolex as well and stuff. We put in a couple of little props that were a bit bigger than just the trainers and the jackets and stuff. So hence hence a bag found its way into the shots. But Noel has Adidas bags that he brings along as well and stuff. It was just I think. Yeah, but but that that one it was yours, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. okay. I think okay. so, yeah. Or, or Gary might have given Noel probably got that bag at the end of the day. Yeah, probably totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been one that's like, oh, look, this is another latest one or whatever. You take this one, guys. So it just found its way into it. Yeah. And how how is the experience to be with a band in the studio when they create music? Oh, it's magic. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah? It's best feeling yeah, in yeah. the world. Best feeling in the world. Yeah. You, you, yeah, I, I think you probably has a lots of experience with that, right? Not only Oasis, yeah, yeah. but another musician. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, no, with Paul Weller, I was there what, during Wildwood, Stanley Road. Yeah, and I've been fortunate to be, be yeah, at the birth of some of the, uh, the greatest songs ever written. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. I've been very I'm lucky. Asking. Yeah. Yeah, very lucky. Yeah, no, and I appreciate that. And, and I, I still stay very quiet when it's happening as well. You wouldn't even probably know I'm even there. I'll be sitting behind an amp, or I'll be in a corner somewhere and just letting those guys do what they do yeah. and make their magic. Because you can ruin moments being a photographer sometimes. Totally. You can yeah. stick the fucking camera in at the wrong time. There's that famous thing about, about is it is it Coleridge when he was re writing um, the Xanadu poem? That supposedly there was going to be another, another verse to that poem and somebody knocked on his fucking door. They knocked on his door when Coleridge was about to fucking write another fucking chapter. It wasn't a chapter, it was a poem. And somebody fucked that poem up. <laughs> so, so that's that's how how easily you can you can you fracture a moment by yeah, suddenly yeah. thinking, oh yeah, Lawrence wants to take some pictures now. Do we yeah, yeah, yeah. no yeah, let them do that? Look over here. Yeah, yeah. Over here, look at me, look at me, <laughs> yeah. oh. fucking well, no, all over here. Yeah. <laughs> totally, you keep, yeah. You keep, you keep quiet, you keep quiet and, and, what, and let the magic appear in front of you. So 
Yeah, I've been very lucky. So and exactly. hopefully that that's that shows in the pictures that you're you're seeing you're seeing those moments honestly and, and those pictures they stand up they stand the test of time those pictures you know they're honest pictures they're not being recreated there's not somebody fucking styling it or doing all that shite they're actually genuine moments in history so i've been very lucky to document them yeah, yeah. And, and and after that it is this a, a, a curious question when when the album is out do you hmm. do you go and buy the album or do you receive a promo copy i don't know i don't know just I get, I get, just for curiosity I get, yeah. <laughs> yeah i get a promo copy yeah i even <laughs> i even get i even get gold discs as well sometimes as well oh i, cool, I get cool. this as well i think i put some somewhere i don't know i don't know where but he put those sort of things i think it's still in their in their boxes but no sent me yeah he's good he sent me yeah from the the first ones and stuff with nice signatures on the back to me and stuff very sweet oh, okay. so yeah Perfect. and i've got the lovely I've got the lovely Peter Blake one. They did a lovely um, they did a lovely edition of a hundred silk screen prints of the um the stop the clocks one, so which I put in the last oh, exhibition as cool, well. Cool. So it's not for sale, but <laughs> I put a copy of the screen print. I've got I think I've got number one of one of seven, I think. I'm one of yeah, number seven of a hundred, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh great, so, great, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, so the Oasis videos. Nice um, picture, it's it's amazing. Like, yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's a lovely shot, yeah. Totally, lovely shot. totally. Yeah, the concept and, and everything in this video is amazing. Yeah, it's a brilliant video, isn't it? It's one of their best videos. Yeah, exactly. Far, exactly. Far, far. How, how, how was it, the day? It was good. We were only did, we just did, and this is luckily, it's down the, it's down the road for me, this place. It's, it's going down to, I'm living in Kensal Rise, and it's just going down the hill towards Portobello, where the market is. And mm. it's an old, very old funeral parlour just off of, um, off of Labrador Grove. And um, and you know where the reference is for from Dead End Kids from the Kinks and stuff yeah, where yeah, Dawn, yeah, for the Kinks, the lovely exactly. Dawn, Dawn. I might I might mispronounce her surname. Dawn, so the Dawn Shadworth, Shad Shadworth, Shadworth. <laughs> but she, <laughs> mm -hmm. she's a, she's a brilliant director. Okay, and she did a great job. Yeah. So we just did the day. So I mainly did the day, obviously with the band in, and they did another day with Reese Evans where he does the exteriors and the, and the other funeral parlor bits, but. Yeah, it's got all the lovely references. Some of my favourite films, Billy Liar and the Kinks video and stuff. So and you've got you've got Zach in there, you've got Reese. And if you look closely, Reese and Liam, it's 11 o'clock in the fucking morning. Look at their hands. They have cans of red stripe in their fucking hands. It's 11 o'clock, you already They were already yeah. visiting the toilet at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's only rock and roll, though, but I like exactly, it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Great. Oh, amazing. Amazing picture. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oasis Life. Mm, that picture yeah, is, yeah. is really amazing also. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. if you look at the bottom, if you look at the bottom left hand corner, there's one shoe on the stage. Yeah. And what exactly. shoe do you think it is? It's only an Adidas shoe. It's an Adidas. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and I so, didn't put it there. I and that's for, for Gary also. For Gary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gary threw that on. Yeah. yeah, for yeah. Gary was throwing trainers from the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get one on the stage. Yeah. No, totally amazing. Amazing. Yeah, that's good. I'd forgotten that. I don't know if that's the night that there was one of those gigs. I don't know if it was the Glasgow one. I'd totally forgotten. And somebody reminded me at the exhibition, they were at the show where the crowd surged forward and they yeah. hadn't built the crash barrier in the right way. They built it too straight. Exactly. They hadn't let it fan off at the edges to dissipate all the energy that crowd when it surges forward. Oh, the is, whole, yeah. the whole, the whole front barrier jumped three feet. It split and jumped three feet. It was the scariest thing. Wow. I was like feet away from it, and suddenly it was at my back. Whoa. <laughs> the whole the whole crowd surged forward, and they hadn't built it right. And it was scary. It was the scariest. Everybody looked at it afterwards, the security footage, and just saw this tsunami of people moving, wow, wow, moving wow. this crowd barrier. And then they had security men, and people had to get underneath and rebolt it. They stopped the whole concert. Everybody said, "Calm down, calm yeah, down." They yeah, put yeah. the guitars down. Please, nobody come forward because it would have become like a cheese grater. If they surged again, people would have been forced through these gaps in the in the crash barrier. And thank goodness nobody got hurt. And I had totally forgotten about that. Somebody somebody came to see the recent exhibition. So I was there that night that the, yeah. the barrier moved. And I said, wow, I totally forgotten about yeah, that and, night. And the photographers are like uh, in a place uh, at the front of that people, right? 
yeah 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 there's just that yeah it's just the stage and just the, the front bit where you've got a few exactly. cameramen and stuff and yeah there's no yeah no so luckily, if, if luckily, everybody nobody was when to were crash yeah if they'd gone again it would it was starting to split the bolts had, had split but they had to move it and everybody had to take a few steps back and let oh. them push the barrier back out rebolt it and then fan it off at the edges so when it when it if it did people did surge again it, it went off the energy dissipated down the side of the crash barrier they built it too straight somebody had fucked up big time yeah, and luckily nobody was hurt it. nobody wow. was hurt thank goodness wow. but somebody could have died very easily that day yeah and, and and this was the last time you shoot oasis live or did you do it um to do later there might have been yeah because what tour is that the that's the dig out your soul tour, yeah 2005 yeah, 2005. yeah. 2005, yeah, because we haven't got anything. Yeah, after that, it would have been getting towards the end of it. Yeah, it, um, it could be. Yeah, yeah, it would. There might have been a few little other gigs here and there and stuff. I don't think I went abroad much with them. It could have been. Yeah, it could could well have been. Yeah, getting okay. towards the latter part. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This this one's from Oasis. Uh, <clears throat> the first picture uh, of Liam smoking. <clears throat> Where is it? <laughs> That's the Birmingham NIA. And it's the they set up to do the um, pre sort of um, lighting and stage rehearsals for the tour. So they basically mocked up. It's not built up stage. The stage is set. so <laughs> Liam. So I think he came up to me and he said, "It's obviously the tour is just about to begin. They're meant to be rehearsing for it." I love it. Wherever I go now, they build me a bar. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> go, they build me a bar. And it's true. They build me a bar wherever I go now. Well, he has two drinks, right? One in yeah, the, left, the one drinks. In the right. You can see, yeah. his, you, see yeah. his Benson, you can see the Benson and Hedges packets on the floor. Obviously. The yeah, yeah, I yeah. put the yeah, I put the camera right on the floor, basically. I just oh, put the camera. Oh, okay, that, that, okay. That panoramic camera is sitting on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah trying yeah, to get. Yeah. I was trying to get the cigarette butts and the and the can and the and the, and the, the cigarette box in the picture. And, and he's wearing in the back, right? Three. Somebody's in the back, I think. Yeah, but it's facing that be facing the lighting desk and the monitor mm -hmm. guys, basically. So it's facing away from the stage. Yeah. Well, yeah. there wasn't really a stage. They did it all on floor level, basically. It's the it's the lighting guys rehearsing the light lighting patterns, the sound men testing all the sound equipment, the guys rehearsing their set. So it's it's yeah, it's like I think they did normally do a week or two. They probably would have done probably a couple of weeks just in a small studio music studio and then they'll probably do two or three days where you've got the full-on set so they're making sure everything's working okay. the lights are all doing what they're meant to be doing so when they take it into the stadiums it's all been it's all been rehearsed a bit and stuff so they know what they're meant to be doing so so i think yeah i don't think noel was too pleased with him that that day yeah but and, and you, were, you were saying that liam is wearing obviously an Adidas it's another yeah, another it's a fame i think it's an eastern european football team again yeah, it's a very yeah, rare yeah, yeah. very rare football top which i didn't bring along i think that was one that that liam had in his wardrobe that he wore but yeah i don't think there's many of those tops exist so very rare <laughs> Which which Japanese. color it was the jacket? Can you remember? It's 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 black and I think black and white or black and yellow stripes. Mm. Black and white probably. Yeah. Mm. Some some Adidas aficionado will tell us tell us what team it is. Yeah. It's one of those, but they're not 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 brushy or munch and gladback or something, but one of those sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not German. Uh, it was one of the, I think it was an Eastern European small team or whatever, but uh, okay. you didn't see I I'd never seen that top before. Yeah, so so it. this was not a gig, it was a rehearsal gig, right? It's rehearsal it's rehearsal a, yeah. lighting and, and, and yeah, well, exactly. music yeah, equipment yeah. and everything. Oh okay. yeah, pre -tour, right. it's a pre-tour rehearsal basically. Yeah, cool, yeah. Cool, cool. And the whole band was there. Yeah, yeah, and everybody was there. Yeah, I think that's that's why why Liam just said, said Look, I know what I know what I'm going to sing. I know how I'm going to sing. Yeah, it. yeah, Liam. You guys want you guys want to test your amplifiers. Exactly. You want to test your guitars. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to go and have a fucking drink. <laughs> you can, he was testing you can the drink. Around, but you can he swing with the guitars. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to do that. I've got a tambourine and a voice. So fucking that's it. I'm fine. He's doing the the list of drinks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> for the backstage. Yeah. I'm going to test the bar. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. yeah oh great great and and that picture at the bottom it, it, it was one, yeah, a, that... a great picture mate uh where was taken that's and... shot that shot in denver that's in denver so that mm. that might have been the last they, that that might have been the last session i did that's um mm. whose birthday was that it was one of the guys birthday i don't know whose bloody birthday mm. that was i think it was one of the bandit i don't think it was noel's birthday i don't know mm. it was oh, one right. of the band's birthday because 
Scully, you know, famous Scully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. He put, he, there's some pictures, I think, on the Bailey Walsh video where you see them surrounded by some little, I don't know what term you're meant to use for small people now, midgets or whatever. I don't know if I'm politically correct here for the, the small people, but they got some yeah. people that do like singing telegram things and stuff. And Scully, of course, got some small people to come along and dance on a table and sing happy birthday. Yeah. And um, I think we all we all ended up on acid that night looking for. I think I'd found out that Colonel Custer's grave was near there, or snow, or something. Wild Bill Hickok, or something. <laughs> <laughs> I remember trying. It's an amazing venue. It's built. It's an amphitheater built into the rocks. Oh. Denver, Denver Red Rocks. It's called. It's the most amazing exterior venue I've ever seen in my life. It's right. like a natural a natural amphitheater. So oh. it was amazing. And I think Tom Tom from Kasabian nearly blew himself up that night. Because it's so high altitude, lots of them were feeling they were like out of out of breath really quickly and stuff. So they got they got some the, the medical people who got them an oxygen tank. Really, he's proceeded he's proceeded sort of so in between the um I think coming off he said oh god I'm, I'm feeling faint. They gave him the he's proceeded to then go and like he's got one of those masks on like blue velvet. And he's about to light a cigarette with the fucking. I said, "Don't <laughs> with light that cigarette! Oh, oh you no, fucking blow up, you idiot!" Yeah, so I, think, I think that could have been the night that a lot of people died in the band in that dressing room. But <laughs> thankfully, I, I extinguished his cigarette before he could blow us all up. Wow. It, we mean it's flammable. Yes, it's flammable. It fucking blows up. Totally. Yeah, you yeah, idiot. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and and we, it was because it's, it's high altitude. That yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's mountainous okay. and stuff. So you oh. go out there and you perform, you you get exhausted, really, you know, like going totally, up the Himalayas. Totally. Yeah, up yeah, there, yeah. You, get, you get mounted, to, you know, the um, mountain climbing, dizzy, dizzy spells thing and stuff. Yeah. And and that that uh, picture was taken for promotional? Uh, yeah, it was just a promotion thing. Yeah, I think they just needed a couple of some fresh pictures. And I think people had said, you've got to go, if you're going to go to one venue in America, go to Denver Red Rocks because it's such an amazing venue to, to, to photograph. So I was probably there. I was pretty exhausted. I think I'd practically got there that day. I'd flown, yeah, the following night before. I had to do a change somewhere. I was pretty bloody exhausted when I got there. It was a shame because I, I probably would have taken more pictures. I was sort of, I, I yeah, flagged man. out. Yeah. I ended up falling asleep on the coach at probably one or two in the morning because I'd been up for three days. I, I haven't seen that much picture of, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, there, there might be a few more in the archive that I just haven't, haven't visited. There's probably a few more roles, and that was just a little side of. I think before you got into the main venue, that was just one of the one of the lovely vistas on the side of the mountain there that I took some pictures. Probably pre sound check when the boys arrived earlier that day, so mm -hmm. get there a little bit earlier. But I'll take a few pictures in the venue. So totally. that's how that great, came great around. Picture. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so so Liam, Liam mm. Solo. You mm. work with Liam. I think this was for Pretty Green, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we did it. Uh, it was the same session. Spot. It was different. Yeah, day. Um, that might have been a different day. That might have been a different day because that shot and that shot. The flag is shot in a studio in London. Mm. I think what we did, we did the um, we did a day in Brighton. We might have we might have got back in London in time. We started really early because I wanted that morning light because we were doing that pastiche of the, the quadrophenia scene mm -hmm. and that scene where he takes the scooter off the off the mountain, off the cliffs, is is shot like dawn time and stuff. So we got there the day before. I'd wreckied it. They brought the scooters along. The guy who brought the, the scooters and found where I wanted to shoot from. Did yeah. that, and I think Liam arrived that night. And then I had Polaroids and references and said, we'll probably get a scooter there. We'll do a bit on this road and we'll do that. Then we'll go down to the pier. There's a cafe there, some shots on the seafront. Then the famous alleyway, I shot in the alleyway where, where Phil Daniels shags Leslie Ash in and stuff. <laughs> the, the, the little alleyway. So we shot in the alleyway. And then I think we might have all got in cars pretty quickly. So we might have, we might have done that later in the evening that day. Yeah, it might have been all done in the same day. Okay. And we did some shots of, of Liam wearing some of the um some of the t-shirts and clothes as well. Not not many. And um and then somebody had um brought the flag along as well as a prop. So I said, um, okay. I think they would do it in the background, but I said, no, we'll do a bit of a who thing, a little bit of a who kids are all right number, and I'll drape it round you. And yeah. I just got up a little ladder and took it from slightly higher up. Oh, it was great. The flag. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I saw that. I saw that in Japan. I was do. I did my Noel exhibition. Oh, no, sorry, it might be Noel or a Paul Weller exhibition in Japan in Tokyo. And I walked around to just go and have a look at the Pretty Green store. And I turned a corner, and they'd blown it up to cover the whole side of the building. <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't have a bloody camera with me. Oh. I'd, I'd never seen one of my pictures that big before. <laughs> covered the side of a building. So it was oh, very. Oh, well, that's great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the, this was the last time you worked with Liam. Yeah, I did a little bit when BDI went into Rack Studios. Ooh, so that was the okay. closed one. I didn't do any more, many more clothes. I did one more session with closing, but I'm not really a fashion photographer. I occasionally okay. help people out. Okay. That's not really my bag. Yeah. And um, and then I did, they were in Rack Studios. And I think I just went in for an afternoon on one of the days that they were in Rack Studios. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's a couple of little group shots, a couple of them doing a little bit. They weren't doing much singing that day. I think I got, I mocked them up to maybe run through a couple of songs so I could have a few pictures of them playing. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was their early, their early sort of demos and recording of the first album for BDI. And that's the last time that I worked with Liam. Yeah, that's the last time I shot Liam. 